Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today we've got the original Contra for the 8-bit Nintendo. Uh, this is actually one that sort of uh, came to me because, well, for one, I, I wanted to eventually re-record this game. I did a Let's Play on it many, many years ago, and I also did a, a long play as well. Um, but in one of my recent live streams, uh, people were mentioning how difficult Contra was, and... Uh, you know, I, I hear that a lot on the internet. Uh, people are like, man, Contra is so hard, but I mean, yeah, it's, I think it's tough for anyone that's like not familiar with it, but it's, it's an old school kind of tough where it's, eh, it's kind of tough. Yeah, but when you get familiar with the game, it's, it feels pretty easy, actually. It's just one of those games that, you know, when you get better at it, it becomes a cakewalk. And I wanted to show you um, that in action. So I actually picked up the spread gun here. And, um, and this is pretty much what you want to use for the whole game if you can. Uh, other weapons are useful, like the machine gun is a rapid fire weapon. You've got, um, the, the fire ability as well, which, um, feels kind of rinky-dink, but it actually covers a decent amount of screen space, which can make it useful as well. You've got the laser right here, which I don't really recommend. Um, but it is really, really powerful if you can, if you can use it, uh, effectively. So... You know, as you can see here, I'm just kind of like tearing through the first level, and I'm not really trying that hard. I just, I know where the enemies are. I sort of know what to do. And that's exactly the kind of game that Contra is. You can also press down and A on these platforms to fall down. Um, but yeah, getting a little ahead of myself, actually. Uh, before I actually kick this off, I wanted to give a quick shout out to my Patreon backwards. So they're going to go ahead and flash across the screen. Uh, I recorded this video on May 20th, so if you've backed me after May 20th, your, your name will be on uh, a later Let's Play. So I appreciate the support, guys, and everyone that's uh, helped me out through Patreon. Um, but yeah, Contra uh, on the NES is really not as difficult, I think, as a lot of people make it out to be. So for this section right here, you can pretty much duck any projectile. You can just sit here and duck all the bullets that are coming at you, just like this. Now, some of these guys do drop grenades. You have to watch out for those. You have to move to the left or right when they start dropping grenades. Um, but if you're having a problem here, just duck. Just duck like this. So this is going to be one of those Let's Plays where I sort of try to, like, guide you through the game as much as possible. And, you know, some Let's Plays are just more about rambling and just playing the game. Others are kind of here to sort of actually help you get through the game. So these, like, sort of cores here, these uh, blinking cores, that's what actually will get you through to the next screen. So one thing you can also do is just uh, avoid the, uh, the bullets completely or avoid the optional turrets and just go for the cores, and then that'll actually, you know, make the whole wall explode. And same with this section right here. Go for the core, duck, get up, shoot, 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 duck, get up, shoot. bam, just like that, and you're done. It's, uh, Contra is a very rhythmic game, and it's actually one of the things I love about this game, is the game feels so good to play, because it's just got this, like, rhythm to it. You get into the rhythm, and uh, not all old school games have that that rhythm, uh, but I think that rhythm is also what makes Contra, I think, easier than uh, what a lot of people make it out to be. So here's the main boss right here, and even if I don't have the spread shot, um, even if I don't have the spread shot, uh, it's it's still not that hard. You just need to know where to shoot, and you need to be decent with your controls. It's the kind of game where I think people get fed up with it because they can't just jump into it and beat it with no problems for the first time. And, you know, if you jump into a game thinking that, you need to step back for a second and be like, this is an old school game. It's got a legit old school challenge to it. And you're not going to jump in and finish the game your first try. Um, and you don't want to expect to be able to do that. It's all about practice. This is, uh, I guess it's a barrier or something like that. And, uh, it actually makes you invincible for a few moments. You can see that you're blinking like crazy. Psychedelic Contra for a few moments. But yeah, it's one of those games where, like, when you really know what to do, it's, the game is a cakewalk. Um, but when you don't know what to do, it, it'll definitely give you some trouble. 
but that's where practicing comes into play. You know, the more you play it, the more you get familiar with the level design, the, the enemy flow, things like that, and the better you get at the game. That's what, you know, older video games were like more often than not back in the day. Um, you had to play them, and you had to get better at them, and you got better at them just by playing more. It's really as simple as that. And, uh... And Contra is one of the best examples of that, honestly, because nothing about it is really that insanely hard. I could sit here all day if I wanted to, and not do anything. Or I can just sit here and shoot straight up. And even if I didn't have the spread shot, I could do this exact same thing with my standard pea shooter. Alright, so we're now back to another third-person level, and Contra is a port of the arcade game by the same name, and, um, so these levels are in the arcade version of the game. And, uh, that's why they exist in the NES version. I don't think they wanted to just toss them in just for, for grins. Um, they tossed them in because it made it a more faithful arcade port. You know, these were in the arcade game. And I actually really like these levels in the NES version. Uh, I think they feel a little bit better than the arcade game. Um, they, they take a little bit longer to get through. Um, I just really enjoy them in this one. I think it's a good way to mix up the gameplay, but it's... They're still keeping it very action-focused. It's still... You don't feel like you're taken out of the experience by playing these stages. Whereas some other games will mix things up just because they can. Um, I think it actually really works in the first Contra here, particularly on the NES. I mean, they're still cool in the arcade game as well, but you just blitz right through them. Actually, <laughs> let me go back a step. You actually blitz through that whole game insanely fast, faster than you can, actually, this one. Um, the original Contra arcade game is actually a very, very short game, and uh, it's one I, I actually like quite a bit. I hope to eventually do a Let's Play on that. I need to practice that and, and uh, finally get down to do that. Uh, I've actually been wanting to do that for a long time, but we're, we are going to have to do that sometime in the near future, Contra the Arcade Game. Contra the Arcade Game feels different, though. Uh, it's very floaty. Um, it has more than eight-directional uh, attacking, um, which on an eight-directional joystick or, or directional pad uh, is not the most convenient thing. So it's got this, like, pseudo-analog style uh, control setup, but on a, on a digital... Uh, you know, eight-way controller. Um, but, you know, it's really interesting. I highly recommend playing the Arcade Contra if you're really just familiar with the NES one, because you'll see where all these ideas came from. They came from the Arcade Contra, you know, that just, it didn't originate with the NES game. Um, and I think it's really great, uh, you know, going back to it for, for that reason. But I also, I like it, um, you know, for, for its own reasons. Um, like, I love how this one on the NES just feels so precise. It's one of those arcade ports that um, got its own feel uh, in the NES game. Uh, there's a lot of NES games from the arcade that got ported to the NES um, that just felt different on the NES. Um, you know, they, they played around the system's limitations. Like, the NES definitely would not have been able to handle... Uh, <laughs> arcade Contra with its arcade sized sprites and, and animation and, and things like that. Um, but what we did get on the NES just feels awesome. It's a fantastic feeling game. It uh, plays extremely well. Now in this part, these, uh, these constantly spawning enemies that come in from the sides of the screen, they do start shooting at you, so you have to watch out for that. But again, you know, it's... You know, it can be a little intense, but you know what? When they shoot, just duck. That's all you have to do. Just duck. Like this. See? And you'll never get hit. You know, well, unless they touch you. You do die if they touch you. Um, but yeah, all this stuff is in the Arcade Contra. And, um, you know, it's really interesting going back to the Arcade Contra, because you see all these scenes, but in the Arcade Contra, um, they're much shorter. And some of these stages, where they're full st separate stages in the NES version, they just all blend together in a single stage in the Arcade Contra. So this snow area, and then the um, the Ultra Zone, or the Power Zone, or whatever we go to next, I guess we'll figure out the name after this. Um, in the Industrial Zone looking place, and then the final Alien Lair, or whatever. Um, they're all in the Arcade game, but they're just in the span of like a single level. And... Um, 
it's really interesting to see that and to see the changes they made for the NES version to um, uh, to to better play around the NES's strengths and and weaknesses. And what they ended up doing is just crafting, like, an awesome classic that can basically just stand on its own outside the arcade game. That's what I like about some of, the, like, the NES, uh, arcade to NES ports from back in the day, is many of them can just stand out on their own. Ninja Gaiden is another perfect example, although Ninja Gaiden is a much greater departure from the arcade game than, than, um, than Contra was from its source. Uh, whereas Ninja Gaiden in the arcade was an actual beat-em-up with the Z-axis, uh, NES Ninja Gaiden was just a straight side-scrolling platformer that had more in common with Castlevania than it did uh, the original source it was based on. And honestly, in that case, I think that was for the better. Not only was the game playing on, you know, to the NES's strengths, and we're gonna actually skip that weapon right there. And that is actually a very tight jump right there. For one, it's a tight jump, but the timing is also tight. Because if you don't time it just right, you get hit by that that uh, flame column, and uh, you pretty much die. So there are some- oops! <laughs> I just ran right into that. I meant to duck, but I didn't duck fast enough. So that's that was my fault. I knew that was coming. And just look at the pattern here. It goes one, two, three. One, two, three. That's it. And you can just jump up, duck, jump up, duck. Just like I'm gonna do here, jump. Oops, jump, duck. Jump. And that's it. And this part you can actually just jump over, so I'm gonna wait for it to dissipate, just like that. And that's what I'm talking about, you know, you learn these things the more you play the game. Um, but even on your first playthrough, just watch what's going on on screen. And we're probably- ooh, I'm surprised I didn't get killed by that. So we're actually invincible right now, we did pick up the barrier again. And, uh, but now I need to, uh, you know, play it a little bit safer since I'm not invincible now. It only, it only lasts for a few seconds. It's nothing crazy. Alright, so now we're at the boss. And even with this weapon, we're still not gonna have, really, a hard time. So on this boss, I do recommend standing back, though, so you have more, uh, more room to dodge his projectiles. He always shoots projectiles along the ground. So the second you see him shooting them, just jump. You can also, sh you know, you can aim in multiple directions when you're in the air. So when you're jumping over him, you can also shoot down if you want. If you want, you don't have to. If you're not quite up to that um, level of dexterity with your NES, uh, you know, controls, uh, you know, just jump over him, go to the other side of the screen, uh, or if he comes back, jump over him again, and then just wait till he's on the other side of the screen and then start firing at him. So there's going to be a bunch of, uh, like, walls that come up on this, uh, this stage. And here's the fire. Fire ability. So I get to demonstrate that. What I kind of want to do is do a playthrough where I only use the fire attack. I think that would be interesting. Because it's not a very powerful weapon, but what is nice about it is it does have, um, you know, a wider reach than, um, like a machine gun or just your standard rifle do. But it's pretty much as strong as either one. You know, so it doesn't have auto-fire. Machine gun is actually the only weapon in this game that has auto-fire. You just, you just hold down the button and that's it. So these walls here, you also just, as you play the game more, you sort of like, memorize where they appear. Here's another barrier. This just makes us invincible. Now you gotta watch out with these uh, little minecart looking things. Um, if they run into you, uh, I think they actually kill you. <laughs> so, definitely gotta watch out for those. There's gonna be a spread shot here. Oops, I actually did not want to jump down like that, but that's, that's okay. We're gonna have to just deal with it. So this is a, a tricky part. The second you get close to these things, they start sort of chomping down at you, and they have different rates. Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four. Oh, two, three, four. Okay, so it looks like that one goes down four times in a row, and this one just goes down a bunch of times. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, t nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, that was close. I saw that guy coming from behind me. 
So, ideally you want to take the top way, um, but I wanted to get the spread shot, so... Uh, unfortunately it fell down below, uh, so I had to take that risk. But the risk is worth it, because the spread shot is just an awesome weapon. And as you can see, you can just wreck through enemies with it. So in this part, the uh, the weakness is right here. And with the spread shot, you can just tear right through it. So in Contra, this is it has a, a, a gameplay trait that's very common in projectile-based uh, action games or shooters on the on the NES. Not even just the NES, but just in general. And um, you know, you can only have so many projectiles on screen. So like right now, I'm mashing the button. You can see that the spread shot, you can only have about 10 projectiles on screen for what it seems like before it lets you put more projectiles on screen. That was probably done for performance reasons. Um, if you were able to just litter the screen with as many projectiles as you wanted, you would slow things down most likely. Um, but you'd also make the game a lot easier than it probably should be. So there has to be some limitations in place. Um, but when you get really, really close to enemies, you can start pummeling them insanely fast. Because every time you, you connect with the enemies, those projectiles are pretty much being counted as going off screen. And then you can make new projectiles appear in, on the screen. So kind of like that right there, just mashing my way. When you're farther away though, you want to sort of like taper your shots like this. See how I'm just tapping the button lightly? That keeps a semi-rapid... Um, you know, stream of bullets coming out, which keeps me safe. Uh, particularly on levels where there's just constantly uh, spawning enemies from the left and right sides of the screen. Now these jumps here are tight, but what I recommend doing is trying to go the top way if you're not that good with your, uh, your platform jumping. So with the spread shot, we can also just take our time and just sort of snipe these guys from a distance as well. And on this part, if you're having trouble with it, well, a little too late. I was going to say, just try to snipe these guys from a distance. Now, this is a pretty tricky part right here. You've got to watch out for the uh, little face hugger looking things. Oops. And you got to try to make sure that doesn't happen. But what you want to do is just try to take out these guys on the bottom first. They are the little... I don't even know what you call them. <laughs> the sources where they spawn from. You can basically take them out. And, you know, you can try to get the others up top. It's a little bit harder. Just sit back, take your time. And don't miss with every shot like I am. There we go. And now we can just go for the heart and just... And this is where a turbo controller would come in handy. This, this is actually wrecking my right right hand right now. <laughs> and that is Contra on the NES. So like I said, guys, I mean, I died a couple times. I was a little lazy, but it's, it's not the crazy difficult game that I think uh, a lot of people make it out to be. It's one of those games with a legitimate challenge that can be legitimately overcome just through general general gameplay, just general practice. Uh, it's not rocket science, it's just a little bit of memorization, a little bit of knowledge about the game. You know, it's not even necessarily memorization. You don't have to sit there and study it like you have to study for a, you know, a final exam in college or something like that. But uh, you just play it, you enjoy it, you learn from your mistakes, and that's what that's what these old school games are about. You know, they they didn't hand you success on a silver platter like a lot of modern games do. And, um, you know, they require you to just experiment and figure things out. And Contra is just a shining example of that. It's not really brutal in the sense that the game's trying to make your life insanely difficult. It's not that kind of game. It just has obstacles. You've got to learn them. Um, and that's it. You get better uh, the more you play it. Um, I was able to one one life clear this game when I was in, I think I was like in second grade. Um, I mean, it's just one of those games where you 
the more you play it, the better you get at it. And the more you play it, the better you get at it. It's, it's just that simple. Now, what I actually kind of want to do, and I probably shouldn't do this, I should probably just end the Let's Play right here, but... What I'm going to do is start the game over, and this is going to be the second loop, because it's going to be a little bit harder. It actually just throws you into the next loop, and the game does get harder and harder and harder. It's got multiple loops. And I'm going to go through the game with just... Um, just my uh, rifle here. So not only uh, will I show you how to get through the game with the spread shot, which is sort of like the easy way to do it, but I'm going to also do it with just my rifle here, and we'll we'll see what kind of uh, success we have with this. I predict we will do just fine. Now, it's going to take a little bit longer, that's for sure. <laughs> it's going to take longer than 20 minutes. Uh, but, again, I think we will we will do just fine. So, you know, this is, you know, what's good about doing this is that... Actually, what I am going to do is at least get the R power-up. That'll make my rifle a little bit faster. So, the R power-up, I don't know if it stands for rapid or something like that. But it basically speeds up the, uh, the traversal of your projectiles. So they go across the screen faster, basically. So yeah, what's good about doing this is that it'll give you an idea of how to play through certain sections if you if you die. If you die, you lose your weapons. It's like right here, you just duck in the front. Or you can just get down and shoot diagonally up, and that's it. Uh, so I really, really want to just drive home um, the fact that this game really isn't that hard. And if you think it's hard, I I implore you to really just sit down and play the game. Just keep playing the game, you'll get better at it, and then you'll eventually get to the point where your skills have increased, and you won't think the game's really that hard. You know? That's what it is to just get better at these old games, you know, the more you play them. You'll start thinking about difficulty in a different light, you know. Sit down, play it, enjoy it. Contra is such an awesome game, it's one of my favorite NES games, actually, and, um... I actually enjoy the, the first Contra on the NES more than most of the other later Contras because it's not a hardcore memorizer. Like, Contra 3 and on, the series became a hardcore memorization series by that point. The original Contra, I can go into it pretty rusty and still beat the game. Uh, Contra 3? <laughs> if I don't have that sucker memorized from start to finish, I'm, I'm not getting anywhere, basically. Um, that's how hardcore was. That's how uh, Contra 4 was. That's how Shattered Soldier was on PS2. Uh, and that's basically just what the series became from Contra 3 and on. Uh, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. I mean, they're still awesome games, too. I still love, you know, pretty much most of the Contra series. Um, but the NES one is, is just the most fun to me. It's the less memorization heavy. You still have to be good. You still have to be you know, familiar enough with the game um, to be able to get through it without problems. But it's not the hardcore memorizer that the later ones are. So for guys like that, you want to just sort of lead your shots. You'll notice your shots, they don't go all the way across the screen immediately. You know, they're not at the end, like the second you press the B button. So you have to lead your shots, and that's a really good skill to have uh, in games like this. And it's a skill that you'll you'll get better at, you know, the more you play it. Again, practice makes perfect, as the saying goes. Well, we're gonna skip the laser power-up. I should just go through the whole game with the laser. That would actually make it harder, because the laser is really slow to go across the screen. So I'm gonna just shoot this guy diagonally from a long ways away. That's the other great thing about Contra, is you don't need to... F you don't, don't feel the need to, you know... To take everything head on, you can take things on from a distance. You have long range shots uh, for a reason, like this guy right here. Gonna take that turret out from a distance. You can play it safe, the game allows you to. Now, this is getting a little bit trickier because these guys are constantly spawning uh, from the sides of the screen. And uh, this is something that happens just more and more on subsequent loops. So the more you beat the game, the harder it gets. 
and we're just gonna come down here and take this guy out from a distance. Now you gotta watch out for their projectiles, obviously. Same with this guy, just gonna do it from a distance. And I wanna stay away from the sides of the screen because those guys will keep coming out even if uh, I'm hugging the side of the screen. So that's a risk you've gotta worry about. You gotta watch out for the constantly spawning guys from both sides of the screen. All right, here we go. All right, so this part right here, like I was talking about earlier, sit here, hold up, hold up and fire, that's it. So level four, I'm going to go ahead and take out some of these guys just to make life a little bit easier. All right, one room down. Pretty good progress, actually. So you can see how even with just like your default shot, it's not that hard. With your default shot in particular, you just have to think about things in a different light. You know, you don't have the spread shot spreading all over the place, uh, helping you out. So you do have to think about you. Ugh, sorry, <laughs> brain fart. You do have to think a little bit more about what you're doing when you're using the main shot, but. Shoot rapidly, shoot often, uh, make sure you're actually aiming for things that, you know, you want to take out. You know, just because you can shoot doesn't necessarily mean you should. You don't always need to be constantly mashing. So if your hand gets tired, just wait. Only shoot the things that you really need to shoot. What I want to do is try to take these guys out. And I want to take that turret out before I do anything. Because that turret's going to make things a little bit more difficult on the, uh, the second form. I also want to try to take out these bubbles. Is that what they are? I always thought they were bubbles. I don't actually know what they are. So for these things, I recommend just like stopping and just shooting up. And there's no rush, there's no time limit on these bosses. And that's something else I think people don't realize uh, in a game like Contra is you don't, you're not rushed to get through the game. So um, I think just by nature, people generally feel rushed in this style of the game. They feel like they have to keep going. Because in a lot of arcade games and shooters in general, there are time limits. Um, Arcade games in particular, is a lot of times there's there's time limits and things like that. And some arcade games will even kill you if you don't beat a boss fast enough. Um, I think that's just basically to keep people from just like latching onto a machine, because arcade games are money making machines. That's their first. Their, that's their purpose first and foremost, and um, that's one reason why arcade games were. So challenging compared to home games because they wanted to boot the players off the machines. They wanted, you know, a player on the machine, in most cases, meant the operators not making any money on said machine. You might get the quarter, but if a person's having a really good game and they've been on it for a half an hour, they haven't been making any money in that half an hour since. Um, so that's why you oftentimes have like more stringent rules in uh, arcade games. Time limits where there might not be time limits on console games. Um, 
more strict uh, rules, like, you know, if you don't beat the boss fast enough, you might die, you know, the whole screen will explode or something, and you'll get killed with the boss. Uh, things like that. Things to try to end your game faster than, uh, than what you would typically see on consoles. But I feel like, you know, despite, say, like, Contra being a console game, I, I feel like some people still feel pressured to just rush through the game as fast as possible. But the fact is, you don't have to do that. So in this part, you just mash as fast as you can, and you've got to actually mash as fast as you can. Um, otherwise, that thing will come in and, and, and crush you. It's one of the, the tougher... Uh, I, I'd say it's one of the, the parts that requires the most endurance in the game. So we're just going to skip those weapon canisters. Doing really well, actually, all things considered, you know, for just playing with the, uh, the rifle. All right, boss time. Just get right underneath this boss and just shoot straight up. And that's it. That looks like a pretty good fight, too. I just, just kept jumping over those things straight up and kept focusing on uh, the boss itself. And we're up to 15 lives. Then... You know, one of the other things about Contra that makes it not as hard as it probably could be is that you have a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of buffer room, basically, uh, for lives, extra lives and things like that. I mean, you get extra lives just out the wazoo in this game. All right, so we're going to try to jump right at the edge. It's a very, very tight jump there. Uh, which is why the easier route is the top route, but you have to make sure your timing's more on point on the top route. Alright, so we're not going to die here again. Just duck. And we just wait and then jump. Wait and then jump. If I really wanted to, I could just go down like this, not use the invincibility. into that projectile. I had a feeling something like that was going to happen. But realistically, what I could have done is just ducked right here. That's what I should have done. Alright, back to this boss again, and... Funny enough, we're actually fighting him the same way we did the first time. <laughs> so bosses, as you go through subsequent loops, they do start taking uh, more hits to take down. Which is pretty fun. I like how Contra just gets harder and harder and harder. Like, it's got a lot of loops. It keeps getting more difficult um, as you go through the game. It's not like Super Contra, where it only has like one loop and then that's it. And the difficulty caps out. And even in that game, the difficulty isn't really that much harder than it is uh, normally. But this one gets really, really difficult. Okay, we need to not get that. If I pick up a weapon by accident, I'll just kill myself, and, and that's pretty much it. Okay, that's going to actually be pretty tricky. I'm going to take him out from the bottom. And I guess we don't... Eh, I guess we can't get back up now. All right, let's wait for that to go by. So you can see how this is just a very patternistic game. It's just... You know, wait and analyze your things. So, because right, left, right, left. You'll notice how the pattern, it doesn't vary. It's always the same pattern. 
So I'm basically just watch and learn. You know? And this is a super tight jump. Alright, there we go. So this is going to be a little bit trickier right here with just my rifle. Oh, never mind. <laughs> my mashing skills have overcome the challenge. Alright, so we're actually getting really close to the end of the game again. And there we go. Now those uh, turrets on the bottom, you can actually kill them. So if you want more points, um, that's another um, that's another topic actually, is you can, um, you know, when you're playing for points, you want to try to kill as many things as you can. Um, so if you see like those turrets, you want to take them out. So this sort of mini boss here will be definitely a little bit trickier with just my rifle. And this guy gets insanely difficult on subsequent, subsequent loops. Um, the little baby alien things start taking way more hits. Um, he takes more hits. And uh, it just becomes a very, very difficult fight if, if you don't have spread shot. If you don't have the spread shot. And these guys I recommend just taking out from a distance. You can actually... Uh, Scrolling the screen over is what actually triggers these guys. So you notice, like, the one on the far right's not uh, attacking. It's because he hasn't been triggered yet. You have to push the screen over a little bit more. So use that trick to minimize the amount of enemies appearing on screen. And this is a technique you can use in other games as well. And once you trigger one, just wait. Kill that first. Oops, trigger the other one too soon. That's okay. I mean, it's not like they're going to over overwhelm me or anything like that. But for people that do have trouble with this game, use these tricks. Take advantage of these these little tricks that you can use to get through the game a little bit easier. This is actually a really good trick to know if you're a better player trying to beat the game uh, as many times as possible. Like one goal I oftentimes have with this game when I have a lot of time is try to max out the score. The score actually maxes out at a really weird number and it requires you to go through the game an insane amount of times to do so, but it gets insanely difficult. Um, and so using tricks like that really helps you um, to do that. So if you're if you're uh, some more advanced players out there that want a, a greater challenge, that is, uh, you can definitely take advantage of those tricks on subsequent loops. Another extra life. Alright, and we just beat the game with our stock shot. So... Wow, and it took us about the exact same amount of time, too. That's interesting. I figured it would take us a good bit longer. But it was, like, literally the exact same amount of time. Um, I guess I was pretty accurate with the shot overall, and I made my shots count. And, you know, when you're trying to recover, say you, you got the spread shot and you die, and you get stuck back with your, uh, your default weapon, um, you know, it's totally possible to recover. It's obviously totally possible to just go through the whole game with your default weapon. Um, you know, it's timing. It's uh, knowing what to shoot at and just making your shots count. So, but yeah, that is Contra, guys. Uh, you know, something I didn't really mention earlier is I, I hope to eventually do the Japanese version of this game. Um, it actually has quite a few like graphical differences. Uh, which makes it kind of interesting to go through. I don't, wouldn't really call it the definitive version um, because it does have some things that slow down the pace, like it's got mid-level like map screens and weird cutscenes and things like that. Uh, that actually kind of slows down the gameplay. I prefer like the pacing of the North American version. Um, but there are some cool graphical effects, uh, like the palm trees blowing on the uh, the 
the fo the first level, um, or the trees blowing on the first level, things like that. Snow on the uh, the snow level. There's actually snow uh, and wind effects and things like that. Um, there's some cool things like that, and other stages have some other differences as well. So now uh, maybe one of these days we'll get around to doing a let's play on that specific one. Um, but yeah, I, I specifically wanted to go through the North American one though, because that's what a lot of people remember and. You know, I specifically wanted to show you guys um, sort of what it takes to get through the game. Um, it, it's oftentimes hyped as being this really, really difficult game. I've seen on like Nintendo Age, some people are like, this is the hardest game on the NES. Like, no. <laughs> slight exaggeration. Slight exaggeration. It might be hard for you, but my answer to that is just keep playing it. Like, sit down and play it. Like, you can't expect to just run through every NES game without problems. Um, and just keep playing the game. Get better at it. You know, that's what we had to do when we were kids. And, you know, that's what video games were like for a long time. <laughs> Not just in the NES era. There's lots of 16-bit games, lots of 32-bit games. Uh, lots of, you know, even up to PS2. There was a lot of games that required you to actually learn the games. Uh, they weren't to give me... Um, and I'm not saying like, you know, modern generation games are bad or anything, but the fact is, older generation games usually had a much, um, much higher learning curve, basically. And, uh, so if you can't beat these games, Contra in particular, um, just keep practicing it. Just play it, enjoy it. Contra is a fantastic game, it's so much fun to play. You can play it with the second player, too. Although I do think playing with the second player makes things a little chaotic. Um, I think it's actually easier to play by yourself. Because uh, you have more more control over what's happening at all times. Unless you've got a really good teammate that's just, you know, you guys listen and communicate to each other. Um, but you can do it that way too. You can play in two-player mode and get used to the game that way. That's what we did as kids. We played, we played two-player a lot. Uh, nowadays, I have no friends, so I just play single-player. <laughs> Um, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to cut off the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. That's two loops of Contra. Um, you can see, if you want, my older long play of this game, where I actually try to go through as many loops as possible. I actually failed to max out my score, but if you check out that video, you can skip to the end and uh, actually see how much harder the game gets on subsequent loops. It gets really, really difficult, actually, and it's actually kind of interesting that it does, because Super Contro just peaks on, like, the, f the first or second loop. Or I should mean the second or third loop, technically, because, you know, the first loop is you going through the game once, and then the second loop is, you know playing through the game again after beating it, difficulty goes up a little bit. I think it just caps out on the second loop, actually. I don't think it goes any higher than that. Uh, but the first Contra just keeps going up in difficulty, uh, and it gets really, really difficult. So trying to max out your score in this game is its quite uh, the undertaking. And people that were able to do that, people that are able to do that, my hat's off to you. It's, it's a challenge. I've done it a couple times, and wow, it's tough. So... But all right, guys, I'm out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. Uh, I will see you soon. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I've got a ton of playthroughs on this channel and many more to come, most likely. Uh, so take it easy, guys. I'll see you soon.